Just above the banks of the Rio Grande, where thousands of women and children are flooding into the United States, you can see the glimmering rooftops of factories cranking out products that used to be made by Americans. The gains from this agreement will be your gains too. The North American Free Trade Agreement, or NAFTA, is now 20 years old. Back then, they promised us NAFTA would create jobs for all of us and stop the wave of illegal immigration from Mexico. So whatever happened to those jobs, and why are the immigrants still coming? In Reynosa, Mexico, there are dozens of new factories built by American companies. Caterpillar from Illinois is here, Kohler from Wisconsin, Corning from New York, Textiles from the South, and Delphi, the auto parts maker, from Michigan. Now here's what's left of the area around the once sprawling Delphi facility in Flint, Michigan, the birthplace of General Motors, Delphi's one-time parent company. And it's not just Flint. A recent study estimates that the total number of American jobs lost due to NAFTA is about one million. And Delphi is now one of Mexico's largest employers with about 50 factories south of the border. They shut right down and tore it down and took our jobs and put them over in Mexico and paid them people peanuts. Flint used to be Motor City. It's no longer Motor City. Where's all the motor? What about the kids here that are going hungry? They're not worried about those kids, obviously, and that's the kids they should be worried about. They shouldn't be worried about what's happening in some other country. Flint is now the murder capital of America, but Reynosa's worse thanks to the drug and smuggling wars there. Leo, a former reporter and city official here, advises not to get out of his van. Through the windshield, he shows us the Mexican worker's ghetto, saying life here is little better for a human than for an animal. La gente, the people, is con animal, con donkey, burro. No running water, no power, animals working as sanitation trucks. Not the no function. Is it for semana? This woman shows us her pay stub from an American-owned factory. She earns about $1.15 an hour. Estos motores. Oh, alternators. Sí. Alternators. No, motor. Para oh, motor. aire condition. Oh, para air con... Uh -huh. She can't afford the air conditioner she makes, and maybe that's one reason the number of illegal immigrants living in the United States has more than doubled since the implementation of NAFTA 20 years ago and CAFTA, the Central American Free Trade Agreement, nearly 10 years ago. It means it's less likely that someone looking for a job will try to come to this country illegally. There's two right here. Two Mexican men we found hiding on the riverbank in McAllen, Texas said they tried swimming to America because the Mexican factories don't pay. They'll be deported, but this man, Ciro, promises he'll keep trying. He's got six kids and no job after all. Congresswoman Candace Miller's calling for a suspension of the trade agreements to motivate the Mexican government to do something about its border. I'm calling on the president to reopen NAFTA, the North American Free Trade Agreement, and also CAFTA, which is the Central American Free Trade Agreement, as well as stopping all the foreign aid that we are sending to these centrals, these countries that are shipping their children up here illegally, and to Mexico. A temporary suspension of trade would require the cooperation of American companies that are making big profits under the trade arrangements. In 2005, when Delphi declared bankruptcy, there were 50,000 American workers. Now, there's 50,000 Mexican workers, and the jobs aren't good enough to keep anybody here.
Delphi now employs about 5,000 people in the United States. And after it declared bankruptcy in 2005, it dumped its pension obligations onto the American taxpayer. It also received billions in bailout dollars through General Motors, and then, according to the IRS, Delphi created a tax shelter in England to avoid paying its fair share of American taxes. Delphi is appealing the IRS's findings. And in the meantime, Delphi recently reported record profits. We called Delphi for an interview. We emailed them. We even dialed into their quarterly earnings conference call. But they'd only take questions from Wall Street. So we went to Delphi's operational headquarters in Troy, Michigan, to ask CEO Rodney O'Neill if he considers Delphi to be an American company anymore. Now, O'Neill wasn't there, so we got to talk to this lady. We're not going to come in at the interview. It, it, there's, there's a way to do this, and if you have specific questions, we can get responsive to them, but we're not agreeing to do an interview. I'm here. If somebody would like to say on camera, we don't want to talk, fair enough. No, That's we're, why we're, we're here. We're going to ask you to leave now. Okay. Okay? Yeah. Well, I've got this chimichanga for Rod. I wanted to congratulate him on the profits. Thank you.